Welcome to another Code Swag video. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a complete cross platform photo gallery app that runs on the web, iOS, and Android using Capacitor, Ionic Framework, and Vue.js. So the first thing that we want to do is to ensure that we have the latest version of the Ionic CLI and the relevant tooling. We do that with the following command. So we're running npm install g, which is going to install everything globally and the latest version of the Ionic CLI, native run and Cordova res. Okay, that's done. So we'll clear the screen. And now we want to create our project. So we do that with the ionic start command. And we're going to be using the view framework. Our project name is going to be view camera app. And we're going to be using the tabs interface. If you want to know how to set up your Ionic development environment like I have with integration with Android Studio, Xcode, etc., then you can click on the link in the corner of your screen or in the description below. Okay, we're not going to create an Ionic account. And that's it, our project has been created. So let's navigate into our project folder. And once we are inside our project folder, we want to install another dependency. So we're gonna type in npm install ionic ionic pwa elements. Sorry, that's a hyphen there. So what this allows us to do is to access some of the plugin functionality from inside the browser or a progressive web application PWA. Okay, that's been installed. Let's clear our screen. And now we can get to the fun part. Let's start coding. So we'll open our project in our favorite code editor. Okay, so we'll go to source and main.ts and let's close this drawer so the first thing that we want to do is to add an import for defined custom elements okay now that our uh, import is done the next thing is we want to come down here and call define custom elements and inside it pass in the window object okay so let's save our file and now we want to run our application in the browser so we go back to the command line and inside the command line we want to run the command ionic serve that's going to start a development server and launch our application in the browser. So here we have the device frame view. To get to that view, just press Control shift i and then make sure to click here, toggle device toolbar. So that's it. This is our um, blank tabbed application. Uh, pretty basic at the moment. But now we get to the fun part let's start coding so back in the code editor we want to uh, close this open the drawer go to views and tab to dot view let's retract that and so let's start customizing our application this is the view camera app that's going to be our title and let's just put that in the condense. Um, now let's get rid of the condense screen completely. So we'll just have that uh, default title. 
and we want to get rid of the explore container this one right here so let's delete that and then we'll delete this and of course delete that as well okay so let's save and now we want to update the imports within the script tag so this is our script tag um, and we want to update the imports to include the camera icon as well as some of the ionic components that we will be using Okay, so we edited this uh, import right here where we are importing the various Ionic components from Ionic View. So we initially had Ion Page, Ion Header, Ion Toolbar, Ion Title, Ion Content, and then we added Ion Fab, Ion Fab Button, Ion Grid, Ion Row, Ion Column, Ion Image. Okay, so this is basically how we work with Ionic components in View. We have to import each component that we're going to be making use of. Next, we want to add the new Ionic components that we're going to be using to the default export, as well as returning the Ionicons in our setup method as part of the composition API. So basically, all this stuff that we imported up here I'm just going to copy and I'm going to add it down here. Okay. And we need a setup method. So I'm going to do that right here. So our setup method is going to return the camera, trash, and close icons. Okay, so I've made a mistake. You can see we have this squiggly line on setup. I need to correct my mistake. So my mistake was I put it outside the export uh, default. So I just need to paste that in there and add a comma here. And that's it. Now it's working fine. I can save this file. Next, we want to add a floating action button to the bottom of the page. So let's scroll up here to the template part of our application. And inside Ion Content, we want to add the following code. Okay, so this is the code that we just added. We are adding an ion floating action button or ion fab that is vertically going to be at the bottom and horizontally it's going to be centered and it's going to be fixed in that position at the bottom of our screen. And there's the ion fab button. So when that is clicked, it's going to trigger this function which we are yet to define, but the function is going to be called take photo. And we have an icon that is coming from our ionicons coming from down here, which is the camera icon. So let's save this. And next, we want to open the next file, which is going to source views. And we want this one tabs.view. So within this file, we want to make a few changes. First, within the tab bar, so here we have our ion tabs, and then we have our tab bar, we want to change the label here. So it's called tab 2. Let's change this to photos. And we want to, of course, make use of 
the images icon and that means we need to import this images icon from Ionicons. So I'm going to copy this, go down to the import and let's add that there. Okay, so let's save and next we'll work on taking photos with the camera. Okay, so with our app launched in the browser, we can see some of the changes that we made here. We have this photos label here on our second tab. We have our floating action button. And when the button is clicked, um, well, now there's an error it's saying take photo is not a function. That's because we haven't defined it. But we can see some of the basic changes that we've made are showing up, though the icon isn't showing up. So that needs a little bit of investigation. But otherwise, we're making progress with our application. Let's move forward. Now for the fun part, adding the ability to take photos with the device's camera using the Capacitor Camera API. We'll first build it for the web as a progressive web app, and then we'll make some small changes to make it work on mobile, that's iOS and Android. So to do so, we'll need to create a standalone composition function paired with the Views Composition API to manage the photos for our gallery. So we want to create a new file at, if we go to Source, and inside Source, we want to create a new folder, and we'll call that folder Composables. So inside our composables folder, we then want to create a new file and we're going to call it use photo gallery .ts. So inside use photo gallery .ts, we will start by importing the various utilities that we will use from view core and capacitor. Okay, so our imports are done. The next thing is we want to create a function called use photo gallery. Okay, so here we go. Um, one small thing I need to correct, you can see there's a red squiggly line here when I was importing uh, this, so I need to change that S, that's a lowercase s, file system with a lowercase s. Okay, so let me explain the code. First, we are importing ref on mounted watch um, these classes from view core. And then we are importing plugins, camera result type, camera source, camera photo, capacitor, and file system directory classes from capacitor core. And then in our use photo gallery function, it exposes a method called take photo. So in take photo, we are calling on the uh, camera. And you can see we have camera here. This is the camera plugin that's coming from capacitor. So we're importing plugins up here. And from all those plugins, we are extracting the camera plugin. So it's this camera plugin that we're accessing here. And we're calling the get photo method of the camera plugin. And when we are telling it to get a photo, we are saying the result type that we want is a URI, which is the camera result type dot URI type and the source. So where are our photos coming from? They are coming from the camera directly. We can get our a photo from the camera or from the gallery on the device, or we can prompt the user to choose which source that they want. 
and then here we are setting the quality to a hundred percent so notice the magic here there's no platform specific code um, anything specific for web for ios or android the capacitor camera plugin abstracts that away for us leaving us with just one method call this get photo over here so that means that this same code will work uh, to open up the device's camera and allow us to take photos regardless of which platform that we are on the last step we need to take is to use the new function from the tabs 2 page so let's go back to tab 2.view and import it oh but before we do that of course we need to press ctrl s to save or command s on a mac so here in tab 2 so in tab 2 we need to add an import next within the default export add a setup method part of the composition api so we destructure the take photo function from use photo so we destructure the take photo function from use photo gallery.ts and then return it okay that's it let's save this file Control s or command s on a mac okay so you may be getting this error that says that uh, you know it's complaining that some of these uh, components haven't these components have been registered but haven't been used iron row iron column etc yes we haven't used them but we're going to use them shortly but let's try to get rid of this error let's go back to the command line in the command line i'm going to press ctrl c to try to cancel yes for confirmation and let's just restart the server by running ionic serve once again okay so after restarting our development server our app functions as expected and if we click on the photos tab and click on the floating action button it's gonna open the camera on our device and you can see it's ready to take a selfie so i'm just gonna take one very quickly and there we go we can confirm that this is a great image if we want it or we can cancel and take another one and there we go but as you can see that after taking a photo it disappears right away but we still need to display it within our app and save it for future access so let's work on the code for doing just that so let's go back to our code editor and we're not going to be working in tab 2.view we're going to be working in use photo gallery.ts now the first thing that we will need to do is to create a new type to define our photo so let's go up here so first we will create a new type to define our photo which will hold specific so let's add an interface to use photo gallery.ts somewhere outside of the main function okay so that's it for our interface um, our metadata is going to consist of a file path and a web view uh, path depending on the device that we're working on so let's save that and then back at the top of the use photo gallery uh, function right after referencing the capacitor camera plugin uh, 
right here. Let's define an array so we can store each photo captured with the camera. And we're going to make it a reactive variable using views ref function. So what we want to happen is that when the camera is done taking a picture, the resulting camera photo object returned from capacitor should be added to the photos array that we just created. So let's update the take photo method and add the following code after the camera.getphoto line. Okay, I just saved the file. So let me explain everything in one go. So up here, we are creating an interface for our photo that's defining the metadata that each photo contains. And down here, we are creating a reactive variable array using ref from view core. And then in our take photo method, we will first take the photo and after the photo has been taken, we are defining this constant called the file name. And the file name basically is just going to consist of the time that the image was taken. And then we will append .jpg. So the name of the file is going to be the time, the timestamp um, with .jpg at the end. And then the saved file image is we're going to be using the file name and we're going to be using the path to the image um, from a camera photo. So here the uh, camera photo variable that's containing this call that we just made. And then in the photos array, this uh, photos reactive array over here, we are then going to add the uh, path. So we are each time we take a photo, we are appending to this array the path and the name for each photo that we have taken. And then, of course, at the end, we just return it in our function there. Back in tab2.view, we want to update the import statement to include the photo interface. And then, of course, we also want to get access to the photos array when we destructure down here. And lastly, we want to add photos to the setup return. Okay, so that's it. We're going to press Control S to save, Command S on a Mac. Okay, with the photos stored in the photos array, we can now display the images on the screen after we take a photo. So to do that, we want to add a grid component so that each photo will display nicely as they are added to the gallery. So we're going to have a grid of photos. And then we'll loop through each photo in the photos array, adding an image component for each. And of course, we'll point to the source of the photos path. Okay, so with the photos stored in the photos array, we can now display the images on the screen. So we added an ion grid so that the images can be displayed neatly. So in the ion grid, we are creating a row and in each row, there's gonna be columns of size six and the key is the photo. And then we're gonna be using V4 
to loop through each photo in the photos array. And then for each loop, we are taking the ion image and we're putting in the source of the photo dot web view path. So we're looping through the photos array and adding each image into our template. So that's it. Let's save this and test it out in our browser. And again, in our uh, browser, we are getting this error where it says we're defining all of the stuff, but never making use of it. So to get rid of this, you just need to restart your development server. To do that, let's go to the command line. So control C to cancel the running process. Yes, clear the screen and restart Ionic Serve. And it's going to fail again, but let's just retry one more time. Okay, and then it works the second time. So if you keep getting that problem, just keep trying to restart the development server and eventually it will work. Okay, so let's go to the photos tab. Let's take a photo. That's photo number one. And you can see it's now appearing in our screen. We can take another photo. And you can see all the photos are being added. Okay, and you can see with each subsequent photo that we take, it's being added to the grid. That is awesome. But the downside of all of this is that this is an array that exists um, in temporary memory. So if we restart the application, everything disappears. So the next thing that we want to work on is saving the photos to the file system so that they are uh, available for retrieval permanently, even after you close the application. Fortunately, saving them to the file system only takes a few steps. So let's begin by opening the use photo gallery function right here. And we want to extract the file system API from the capacitor plugins. So these plugins that we're importing from capacitor, we want to destructure the file system API. So we'll just add in file system here. Next, we want to create a couple of new functions. So the file system API requires that files written to the disk are passed in as base 64 data. So we need a helper function that's going to be used to assist with that. So let's create that function now. Okay, so here's our helper function for converting a blob to base64. So basically, it's uh, going to return a promise. And we are declaring this constant um, reader, which is a file reader. So of course, on error, it's going to reject the promise. And on load, it's going to try to resolve the result of reading the file. And then of course, we're going to run reader dot read as data URL and passing in the blob. Next, we want to add a function to save the photo to the file system after the photo is captured.
Okay, so here is our function to save the photo to the file system. We first of all pass in the camera photo object, which represents the newly created uh, photo from our device, as well as the file name. So that's what we're passing in right here. So that's going to provide a path for the file to be stored to. And then we are making use of the capacitor file system API to save the file to the file system. So here we are. That's what we're doing here by using file system .write file, And then we pass in the file name, the base64 data, and the directory to which we're posting the application. But first of all, we are making sure to convert the file up here to base64. So we're fetching the photo from our response and then we are reading it as a blob on this line, line 40. And then finally we are converting the blob to base64 data. And then it is the base64 data that we are then saving to the file system. Okay, lastly, we need to update the take photo function to call save picture. And once the photo has been saved, we need to insert it to the front of the reactive photos array. So we'll make our edit here. And there we go. Each time we take a new photo, it's going to automatically be saved to the file system. However, there is one last piece of functionality missing. The photos are stored in the file system, but we need a way to save pointers to each file so that they can be displayed again in the photo gallery. Fortunately, this is very easy will leverage the capacitor storage API to store our array of photos in a key value store. So we begin by defining a constant variable that will act as the key for the store at the top of the use gallery function right here. And then next we are accessing the storage API from capacitor plugins. And next we add a cache photos function that serves that saves the photos array as JSON to file storage. So you can see it's using the key here from photo storage and the value is going to be the value coming from the actual photos. Next, we use view cause watch function to watch the photos array. So whenever the array is modified, in this case, taking a new photo or deleting a photo, it will trigger this cache photos function right here. So this is what is being watched and this is what will be triggered when what is being watched changes. So it will trigger the cache photos function. Not only do we get to reuse code, but it also doesn't matter when the app user closes the app or switches to a different app, the photo data is always saved. Now that the photo array data is saved, let's create a function that is going to retrieve the data so that when tab 2 loads, we get the existing photos from storage. Okay, so with our load saved function, basically what we're doing is 
we are getting a list of photos that are inside our storage using the photo storage key and then that is going to be in that variable for our photos in storage and then we loop through each photo that is in the storage and we have that file and we are appending to photos.webview that particular file data and then we are passing the photos in storage back to the uh, photos array. Finally, we need a way to call the load saved function when the photo gallery page is loaded. To do so, we use the view mounted lifecycle hook within the use photo gallery function. So we want to add the on mounted function and then call load saved. So we are doing that up here where we are importing on mounted from Ionic view, sorry, from view, view core. And then below our load saved function, we can just paste in that call to on mounted and then it will call load saved. So when the page is mounted, load saved is gonna be called automatically. All right, that looks great. Let's uh, just save our progress as we go. Let's control S. On mobile, which we are going to be coding a little bit later, we can directly set the source of an image tag to each photo file on the file system and then displaying it automatically. On the web, however, we must read each image from the file system into base64 format because the file system API stores them in base64 within the index DB under the hood. That's it. We've built a complete photo gallery feature in our Ionic app that works on the web. Next up, we'll transform it into a mobile app for iOS and Android. So our photo gallery app won't be complete until it runs on iOS, Android, and the web, all using one code base. All it takes is some small logic changes to support the mobile platforms and installing some native tooling, and then we can run the app on the device. Okay, so let's start with making some small code changes so that our app will just work on any device. So we'll need some platform specific logic. Okay, so first up is we will update the photo saving functionality to support mobile. We'll run slightly different code depending on the platform, whether it's mobile or web. So first we want to import the platform API from Ionic View. Okay, so in the save picture function, we are checking the platform to see what the app is running on. If it is hybrid, which is the native uh, capacitor runtime on iOS or Android, then we're gonna read the photo file into base64 format using the read file method. We also return the complete file path to the photo using the file system API. When setting the web view path, we use the special capacitor convert file source method. Otherwise, we use the same uh, logic as before when running the uh, file on the web. So you can see here, we're using the file system.read file, reading it into uh, base 
64 if it's um, on the web and then saving our file and even in our return here if it's in hybrid we are going to convert the file source but otherwise if it is on a web then we return as we were doing before okay so for this block of code we only want to run this if we are not on a mobile device so that means only when we are on the web is when we want to write this so we want to wrap this in an if statement where we check if we are not on the hybrid platform So only when we are not on the hybrid platform do we run this web-specific code. So that is it. Our photo gallery now consists of one code base that runs on the web, on Android, and iOS. Next, let's work on implementing functionality to delete photos. So still in the use photo gallery.ts file, Let's go up and we want to add an import for the action sheet controller. We'll display an ion action sheet when a photo is clicked with the option to delete a photo. So let's do that. Okay, so up here we are importing the action sheet controller from Ionic View. We're also um, importing the trash and the close icons from Ionicons, which we are going to make use of. And here we have our function for deleting a photo. Basically, it accepts a photo as a parameter, which is the photo we want to delete. And it's modifying the array by making the photos array equal to a photos array that does not have that particular photos file path so it filters out that particular photo using its file path and then uh, creates a new uh, photos array with that and then so this is removing it from the array that we're working with in memory and then removing the photo from the file system we get the file name and um, get that substring and, get, and then get the last index of. So we're getting the last um, photo that's been um, selected. And then we use the file system dot delete file method to select that file name and then that directory. And then that deletes that particular photo. But in order for us to trigger this delete photo function, we are triggering it from an action sheet so what we want is that when a particular photo is tapped we will show this particular action sheet with a header of photos and then there are two buttons that are presented there's cancel so if cancel is clicked we uh, trigger this handler that is empty because we aren't doing anything when the handler is uh, selected Right. When the handler is selected, we aren't doing anything in particular. We just close. Um, so there's nothing in that handler. But then when the delete button is selected, we are going to trigger the delete photo function 
passing in the particular photo. So that's when this is triggered. We pass in the photo, delete it from the array, and then delete it from the file system. And of course, we have our trash icon for the delete, and we have our close icon for closing. And then at the very end, we present our action sheet. And finally, all the way down in the return, we're returning delete photo and show action sheet. Remember that removing the photo from the photos array will trigger the cache photos function for us automatically. So that's going to update in our view. So if we go way up, here, the cache photos function is going to be triggered when we remove the photo from the array. So let's save this. And then back in tab 2.view, we need to make reference to the delete photo function. So first of all, here in our setup, we need to destructure the show action sheet actually it's show action sheet that is destructured from the use photo gallery and so what we want is that when the user taps on an image right here we want to display that action sheet so let's add a click event Okay, so when the image is clicked, then the action sheet function is going to be triggered. The action sheet function is coming from use photo gallery. And here it is. So when that is triggered, and then we delete the photo, and then we trigger this particular function. All right, so that looks good. Let's save this and test it out in our browser. So we'll run Ionic Serve. And when we run Ionic Serve, we are running into this error. So it says in use photo gallery .ts, um, there's line nine where it's expecting a semicolon and save picture was used before it was defined. So let's go to line nine. And on line nine, okay, we're supposed to put in a semicolon there. And on line 85, we are told that save picture was used before it was defined. So, okay, so save picture is defined here at the bottom. So that means we need to move this function um, above. Okay, so the order in which the functions are declared is actually important. So if we just, okay, let's make this the very first function. So I'll paste it up here. And that should take care of our error. Let's control S to save. And again, on line 29, we're having an error where convert blob to base 64 was used before it was defined. So let's fix that. All right, convert blob to, all right, let's, so let's find that. All right, there we are. All right, let me just add this at the beginning as well. And save, hopefully this works now. Okay, so our app is running in the browser and we can tap there to try to delete and we're getting this error that says show action sheet is not a function. 
I have realized where the problem is. So let's get back to the code editor. Okay, so here in tab 2.view, we are destructuring show action sheet from use photo gallery. We're also supposed to return show action sheet. So if I just add it to that return right there, control S to save and then go back to the browser. Okay, and back in the browser, let me just clear the console. And there you go. You can see we have our action sheet, we can cancel and we can delete the picture and it disappears. We can delete it again. If we refresh, we can see our photos change. If we want to take a new photo and save that photo, you can see the new photo is added, old photos. Okay, now for the part that we've all been waiting for, let's now deploy our application to the Android and iOS mobile platforms. So for that, let's head to the command line. In our command line, we just want to cancel the server that was running on serve and CLS that's gonna clear the screen. So capacitor, which is the native runtime for Ionic, was automatically added by the Ionic CLI when we created our project. So there are only a few steps left. Let's start off with building our app for Android and then we'll move on to building it for iOS. The first command that we want to run is ionic build. This is going to prepare all the assets for creating a native project. Okay, ionic build is complete. The next thing we want to do is we want to add the Android dependencies using capacitors. So we run Ionic cap add Android. And once again, if you want to integrate your Ionic development environment, like I have, in order to run your app on Android and iOS, then click on the link in the description below. It's a full guide on getting your Ionic development environment set up and integrated with Android Studio and Xcode. Okay, so we have everything set up. Um, so the Android folder is gonna be created at the root of your project. And this is an entirely standalone native project that should be considered a part of your Ionic app. That means that you should check it into source control and edit it using native tooling like Android Studio. So every time you perform a build like Ionic build, that updates your web directory. So you'll need to copy those changes into your native project. So let's clear the screen. So let's suppose that we had made some changes to the code. We would then uh, run ionic cap copy, and then that would change the uh, that would copy over the changes that we made in ionic in our TypeScript files. That would be carried over into the Android Studio project that has been generated by ionic cap add Android. If you made uh, changes to the native portion of the code, for example, adding new plugins or anything of the sort, then you would need to run ionic cap sync. That would synchronize all the native aspects of the project. Okay, so that's it. Let's get ready to launch on Android. Uh, sorry, CLS to clear the screen. Okay, so capacitor Android apps are configured and managed through Android Studio. Uh, before running this app on an Android device, there are a few steps to complete. So, okay, first let's launch the application in Android Studio. We do that with Ionic Cap Open Android.
Okay, so our application is open in Android Studio, but before our app can run on a device or even on the Android emulator, we must first enable the correct permissions to use the camera. So we configure these in the Android manifest.xml file. So let's open our project. Here we have app. Um, let's look, okay, manifests, right, there we go, Android manifest.xml. Um, so Android Studio usually should open this file automatically, but in case it doesn't, we just go there. Um, okay, so we are looking for the permissions section, which is down here, and we want to type in the following. Okay, so that's it. We are adding these two permissions for reading and writing the external storage. And that should be it. So let's click on the blue play button to run our application. Again, in order for you to get your Ionic application to run with Android Studio like so, you need to check out the video on setting up your Ionic development environment. Okay, here we are in our app. Let's go to photos. And let's take a photo. And we'll save that. So I think these photos that aren't uh, displaying correctly, let's delete them. I think those were from our browser. So let's, these are the photos that are showing up on our uh, these are the show. Uh, the, these are the photos that are showing up in our emulator. Um, our emulator doesn't have a real camera; it just has this sort of emulated camera. But if you run your application on a device, of course, you'll be able to take real photos. Okay, so we've taken these four photos. If we close the application and then come back to it, this is view camera and we go to photos, we can see our photos are persistent, they're still there. And if we delete one, now we have three, and we close the application. Then we have those same three photos available. So that's it, this is our application running on an Android device. Let's check out making our application run in iOS. So here I am in my Mac OS terminal. And of course, you do need a Mac computer in order to build your application for iOS. So since I have just downloaded the application from the repository, which you might be doing if you're going to be downloading the code from here. You need to install the dependencies, and we do that with the command npm install. So npm install is going to install the dependencies that we need for our project. It's just good practice to make sure that this is done, otherwise your application will not run. Okay, dependencies are installed. Let's clear our screen. And next, we want to build our Ionic files and prepare to build for mobile. So we do that with the command Ionic build. Okay, so Ionic build is done and our TypeScript files and everything have been compiled. So again, we're gonna clear the screen. And now we want to add the capacitor iOS dependencies to our project. We do that with Ionic cap add iOS. Okay, so iOS has been added to our project. We're gonna clear the screen one more time. And now it's time to open our application in Xcode. 
So I'm going to run Ionic Cap Open iOS. That is going to open our project in Xcode. And here we go, our application is open in Xcode. So if I click here on app, you can then see we have our application. So the final step is we have to make sure that we have all the permissions enabled. So for that, we want to click up here on info. And we want to make sure that this is retracted, this custom iOS target properties. And you just want to right click and make sure that raw keys and values is turned on. And we can see the so-called low level names. And we can see the one we want is this one, NS camera usage description. So this is automatically uh, put up because a capacitor can detect that we're making use of the camera plugin. So this is, so we have this key right here, the NS camera usage description. And the value is gonna be some text that is presented to the user when the application is asking for permission to use the camera. So it's just gonna tell the user that this is gonna be for taking photos and video. Let's double click. We're gonna double click and edit this a little bit. We're just gonna say to take photos because there isn't any video capability in this application. So that's all we have to do regarding the permission. The final thing is we want to go up here to signing and capabilities. And you want to make sure that you add a team. This is a development team. And this will require you to sign in with your Apple ID. And this should be an Apple ID that has uh, that is linked to an Apple developer account because you will need an Apple developer account in order to run your application on a real iOS device. For the purposes of this demonstration, however, we're just going to be running it in the simulator, though you want to do it on an actual device. So you'll add your team account there and then you'll add your uh, signing certificates and all of that. And then once that is all done, you want to then connect your iOS device to your computer. And then you'll come up here where it says app and then you have this and you can select a device for the iOS simulator. So for now, I'm just gonna be, uh, I have this iPhone SE. Actually, let me make it maybe iPhone 8, that'll be fine, not too heavy on the resources. And all you have to do after all of that is done is to click on this play button in the top left corner, and that is gonna launch the iOS simulator. So it'll build the application, compile it, run the simulator, install the app in the simulator, and we should see our app running in a second. So here is our application launching in the iPhone simulator. And there we go, there's our application. If we click on the center button here, we can get to the photos page. And if we click that, it will try to launch the camera, but unfortunately the camera is not available in the iOS simulator. Kind of like how in Android we had that faux camera that was not really taking any pictures. In the iOS simulator, there isn't any camera at all, but I've just done this for demonstration purposes. However, when you launch on your device, you can uh, check out your camera in action. For, unfortunately, I can't do that because 
well, you can't see what will be on my screen. But anyway, congratulations. You've just created a complete cross-platform photo gallery application that runs on the web, on iOS, and on Android using Capacitor, Ionic, and Vue.js. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you enjoy my content and would like to help me create more of it, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash codeswag. For as little as $1 a month, you can help me to create more great content as well as enjoying benefits such as being able to request future tutorials, getting early access to all my video tutorials, and other great stuff such as one-on-one -on -one debugging help. So please head over to patreon.com forward slash codeswag.